In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural battered metal material. And then after we create the procedural material, I'll show you how to join the material together into this custom node group. So I'll just review the material. So we have the overall scale to change the size of the material. And then we also have two different metal colors. So we have metal color one and two. So you could make it kind of like a lighter gray if you want to. Then we also have this noise scale. So you can just change the size of the noise on the surface of the metal. And then we also have the noise noise detail, so I could turn that down if I want it to be a bit more bumpy. Then I also have the noise roughness, so if I turn that roughness up, it'll be much more detailed. Then we also have the rust color, so right now it is kind of like a dark red color, but you could of course change that color if you want to. And then we also have this rust amount value, so you could add much more rust if you want to, or just little bits of rust. Then we have the rust brightness, so you can make the rust much more visible, or you can make it very subtle. And then we have the rust scale, so that'll just change the size of the noise texture, which is controlling that rust. And then we also have the rust detail, and then we also have the rust roughness. So you can see if I turn the roughness down, it looks like there's some big chunks which have been taken out of the metal, or if I turn it up, it's going to be a bit more subtle. And then we also have the rust distortion. Then we have the roughness of the material, so if you want to make it a more shiny metal, you could turn that down, or you can turn the roughness up. And then we have the metal bump strength, so that'll just change the bump surface strength. And then we also have the rust bump strength, so you can make the rust more bumpy or less bumpy. And if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase this procedural material, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. I'll have the links in the description. And if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials, then definitely check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack, which comes with all of my procedural materials, pre-set up for Blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. And you can also check out my procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase packs of 10 materials, and you can also purchase all of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. All the links are in the description. All right, so I'll now show you my scene setup if you want to set up the Blender file the same way that I have. So I press Shift A, and I went here to Mesh, and I just added an Icosphere because I want a nice round smooth sphere to preview the material on. And then right behind me, if you click on the little Add Icosphere Settings, just click on that and open it up. You can turn up the subdivisions, and I'm just going to turn up to six, and then I can close those settings. So we now have a nice smooth icosphere. And then I'm going to use the object context menu and I'll shade the object smooth. So I'll now hit S to scale, and I'm going to scale it down by 0.2 and then hit enter. And then I can press control A and just apply the scale because the default objects in Blender are quite large. So I'm just scaling this down to a better size. And then I also added a camera and I just pointed the camera at the sphere. And also if you select the camera and then go over here to the object data properties of the camera, I turned the focal length up to 80 just to zoom the camera in a bit. And then also, if you want to make the camera be a square image, then if you go up here to the output properties, you can change the resolution to the same numbers. So I'm just using 1920 by 1920, and then I bumped up the resolution to 200, so it's a nice large image. Now for the lighting, I added these three different area lights right here. So I pressed Shift A, and I went down here to light, and I added an area light. And then once you add the area light, you can click here to go to the object data properties to change the light settings. And I changed the shape to disk, and then I also also turn the power up to 200 and I turned the color here to a very slight yellow color and I pointed it at the sphere and then these two other lights here they're also the shape is also set to disk on these ones as well and I turned the power to 10 and I just left them at a white color but then I pointed them at the back of the sphere and that way it'll give a nice rim light on the back of the sphere and then also to get some nice realistic lighting I went over here to the world properties and I added in this studio country hall and this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com, so I'll have a link in the description if you'd like to download the same HDRI that I'm using. And on polyhaven.com, I downloaded the 1K version and the HDR version. So once you download the HDRI, you can go here to the world properties, you can click on the yellow dot next to color, and you can choose environment texture, and then just click on the open button and open up the HDRI. So I'm now going to hold down the Z button, and I'm going to move my mouse up into the rendered view so I can see this in the rendered mode. And if you want to make the background transparent so you can't see the HDRI in the background, you can go here to the render properties, you can open up the film tab right here, and then you can check mark the transparent button. And that way you can't see it in the background. 
And then also if you go down here to the color management, I'm going to use the view transform of filmic and I'm going to change the look to very high contrast and this will pop out the colors and make everything more saturated. So I can now click over here on the shading workspace. So on the shading workspace, I have the 3D viewport right over here and I'm in the rendered mode and then I have the shader editor right over here. So I'm just going to click on new to add a new material and I can just rename this material to battered metal. And then I will also be using the Node Wrangler add-on to preview the different nodes. So if you don't have the Node Wrangler enabled, you can click on Edit and you can go to the Preferences and then just go over there to the Add-ons tab and search for Node Wrangler and you can check mark the Node Wrangler add-on so it's built into Blender and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So I'll press Shift A and I'm going to go to the search and I'll search for a noise texture. Let's put the noise texture here. And then to use the feature of the Node Wrangler, you can hold down the Control and Shift key and select different nodes and that is going to preview the the node on the object. And also select the noise texture and you can press Control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And I want to use the object coordinates so let's take the object and put that into the vector and the object coordinates is going to place the noise texture on the object more evenly. So now we can change some of the noise texture settings. So I'll turn the scale to a 10.5 and then I also want to make it very detailed so I'll turn the detail to the max of 15 and then the roughness here I will turn this to a 0.55 so there's just a little bit more roughness. Let's drag these nodes out of the way and I now want to make this more contrasty so I'll press shift A and I'll go to the search and I'll search for a color ramp and we'll put the color ramp after the noise texture. So now I can drag these two values together and you can see if they are closer together, it's going to be much more contrasty. So I'm actually going to flip these two values and I'm going to put the black tab to about here and then I'll put the white tab over to about there, something like that. And so now it just has a bit more contrast so there will be different colors on the metal. So I now want to make the colors for the metal. So to do that, I will press Shift A and I'll go to the search and I'm going to search for a mixed color and let's put that after the color ramp. Now this color up here, I want that to be going into the factor, and the factor is determining what parts are going to be color A and what parts are going to be color B. So we can now make the different colors. So here on color B, I'm going to make this one fully black. And then here on color A, I'm going to make this a very, very dark gray. And if you want to use the same exact color that I'm using for color A, then you can click on the color and go to the hex, and you can punch in 191919. All right, so that is the color that I'm using, and we'll be able to control these colors later in the custom node group. So let's take the result, and I can put that into the base color, and I can control shift and select the principal shader to preview it. And then if you want to change how contrasty the color ramp is, you can. So you can kind of drag this out. Out or drag this out and you can see there's more the lighter color or the darker color. So I'm just going to leave it to about here. Now because this is metal, I want to take the metallic and turn it all the way up to one so it is a metallic material. Now because this is a super worn old metal, I want to have some variation of where it's metallic and where it's less metallic because some parts might have some dirt or some rust on them, so I don't want the entire thing to be metallic. So I'm going to take the noise texture factor and I'm going to plug that into the metallic. And then to be able to control this, I will select this color ramp, I'll press Shift D to duplicate it, and I'll drop it here in the wire, so in between the noise texture factor and the metallic. And then with the color ramp selected, you can hit the backspace and that is going to reset it. So I'm going to take this black color here and I'm going to make it fully white. And then this white tab here, I'm going to click on this color and I'm just going to make it a little bit darker. So by making all the values white, it is fully metallic. But then if I click on this white color and make it darker, less and less of it is going to be metallic. So I'm just going to make this a very light gray. And the hex color for this lighter gray is going to be D9, D9, D9. And then I also want to make this metal a bit more rough. So let's go to the roughness here and I'll turn the roughness up to a 0.6 so it is a bit more rough. And then I want to add a bit of surface bump so we can take the noise texture factor and we can put that into the normal. And then you can see there's some weird shading issues and that's because we need to convert the black and white data into normal data that the shader can use. So I'll press shift A and I'll go to the search and I'll search for the bump node and we'll put the bump node between the noise and the normal. So just stick it there and I can drag it down. And then we actually want the factor to be going into the height value of the bump and that'll convert it to bump data. So now you can see it looks very bumpy. Now I do want to invert this, so I'm just going to invert that there by checking on that. And then this strength here, I'm going to turn this down to like a 0.3 because it's a bit too strong. So I'll just turn it down to a 0.3 so it is less strong. 
Now I do want to be able to control this a little bit better because I want some parts to be more bumpy and other parts to be less bumpy. So I'll press shift A and I'll go to the search and I'm going to search for the RGB curves and we're going to put the RGB curves in between the noise and the bump. So now I can adjust the curves here and that is going to control how bumpy it is. So I'm first going to click here on the center to add a dot and I'm going to drag this down here and then I can click on this dot here and I'm going to drag this way down. So now you can see that some parts look really smooth but then other parts are more bumpy. So I'm going to drag this dot kind of down here to the middle of this grid and then I can click here to add another dot and I'm going to drag this one up a bit so it's a bit bumpy and then click here to add another dot and I can drag this up so it's a bit bumpy. So we're kind of making this wavy effect. So now that we've done that, you can see there are a few parts here which are a bit more smooth, but then parts over here are a bit more rough. So it just gives the material a little bit more variation. All right, so I now want to create the rust. So I'm going to click on this noise texture here, and I'm going to press Control shift d So Control shift d will duplicate the node, but it's going to keep these wires plugged up to it. And then I can Control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. So let's change some of the settings. So I'm going to turn the scale to 24.5. Let's also leave the detail to the max of 15. And also the roughness here, I'm going to turn this to a 0.85 so it has more roughness. So I now want to make it more contrasty because I only want some rust here and there. So I'll click on the color ramp and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and I can drop it here after the noise texture and then I can just adjust these values here. So I'm going to drag the black tab over and drag the white tab over and make it pretty contrasty. So just something like that is pretty good. So there's just a few white parts here and there but it's mostly black. So I'm now going to be adding in the rust color. So I'll click on the mix node here, I'll press shift D to duplicate it, and I'm going to drop it here after this first mix. And then I want to take this color ramp here, and this is the color ramp for the rust, and I'm going to put that into the factor. So the factor is determining where it's going to be color A and where it's going to be color B. So then this mix here, I can put that into color A. So then color B, if I control shift and select the mix to preview it, color B is going to be the rust color. So if I turn this up, you can see now it's white. So I'm just going to make it like a red color and I'm going to make it very dark. And the hex color that I'll be using for the rust is going to be a hex value of 3C, 0F, 00. So it's very dark, but you will be able to see it in the final material. So now what I can do is make sure that this mix here is going into the base color and I can control shift and select the principal shader to preview it. And now you can see that rust there on the material. Now I also want to make the rust more bumpy. So what I want to do is click on this bump node here and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and I'm going to drop it here after the first one. And then what I can do is take this color ramp here. This color ramp is basically the mask for where the rust is. So I'm going to put the color into the height value and then just control shift and select the principal shader. And I do want it to be a bit stronger. So I'm going to turn this bump strength to a 0.4. So now if I zoom in there, you can see that it's a little bit more bumpy there. Now later on in the custom node, group I want to be able to control the amount of rust. So what I'm going to do is hold down the shift key and I'm going to right click and drag over these two wires here and then let go and that is going to add a reroute here so it is making one wire and then it is splitting off to the bump and the color. So then right in here I can press shift A, I can go to the search and I can search for the hue saturation value and we're going to drop that after the color ramp. So if we take this value and if we turn it up and down, you can see it's going to add lighter values or make it darker. And so because that is going into the factor, that is going to control how much rust there is, or it's going to control the brightness of the rust. And then to make there be more rust all around the material, I can do the same thing over here. So I can click on the hue saturation value. I'll press shift D to duplicate it and drop it here after the noise texture. So now that this hue saturation value is after this noise, the value is going to make the color ramp texture lighter or darker. And so that's going to control how much rust there is. So we'll use those values later in the custom node group. And then there is one more thing that I want to do. I want to go to this color ramp here, which is after this noise texture. And this is controlling the color one and color two. And I think that it's a bit too contrasty right now because you can see that metal is really dark, but then this metal is light. So I can kind of drag these values back. And if I drag them back and farther away, it's going to be a bit less contrasty. So I'll just drag that to about there. So now it's a little bit more of an even gray color. And that is it for the procedural material. So I'm now going to show you how to join it together into a custom node group. So I'm going to click and drag to box select all the nodes except the material output. And I'll press Control G to join it together into a node group. And if you press the tab key, that is going to go in and out of the node group. So I'm going to drag the node group over here and let's make it bigger. And then I can take the battered metal name. I'll copy that name and paste it here. So it is now called battered metal. 
and then select the node group and you can hit the tab key to go into the node group and if you press the n key to open the side panel you can see there is the custom values and i want to double click on this to rename it and i'm going to rename it to shader because i like that a bit better so let's now take this group input i can drag it down here and we can plug up any values up to the group input and then that way we'll be able to control those values outside of the node group so let's go into the node group and I first want to control the overall scale of the material. So this mapping node is plugged up to all the textures. So this is going to change the entire size of the material. So let's put the scale into the extra socket. And if you click here on scale, you can see that it is three values, but I instead want it to just be one value to control the scale. So I'll click on the vector here and I'm going to change it to float instead. Now you can see the texture has disappeared. That is because we need to turn the default value back to one. And then if we go outside of the node group, we need to turn the scale back to one. So now that'll control the overall scale of the material. So let's go back into the node group. So I now want to control the metal colors. So I'll drag the group input over here and I can take color B, put that into the extra socket, color A, put that into the extra socket, and then I can rename these here. So I'm going to rename this to metal color one. And then also right here, I'm going to rename this one to metal color two. And then I want to be able to control some of the noise settings. So let's drag the group input down here and we can put the scale into the extra socket and also the detail and also the roughness. And then here, if you double click on these to rename them, I'm going to add noise at the beginning. So noise scale and noise detail and also noise roughness. And then I also want to be able to control the color of the rust. So I'll drag the group input over here and let's take the rust color here, which is color B on this mix. I can put that into the extra socket. And then if I click on this to rename it, I'm going to rename it to rust color. Now I want to be able to control the rust amount. So if I drag the group input back here, we have this value here to control how much rust there is. So let's put the value into the extra socket and I can rename this to rust amount. And then to control the rust brightness, we have this one here. So the second hue saturation value. So let's take this value. We can put that into the extra socket and then I can rename this to rust brightness. And then I want to be able to control some of the rust settings. So let's drag the group input down here. So this top noise texture is controlling the rust. So let's put the scale into the extra socket, also the detail and the roughness and the distortion. And so now we can click here on these values and I'm going to add rust to the starting. So rust scale and rust detail, and then also rust distortion or rust roughness and also rust distortion. And then I want to be able to control the roughness of the material. So let's go over here to the principal shader here. We can take the roughness, we can drag out a wire, and we can stick this into the extra socket. So now we can control the roughness. And then I want to be able to control the bump strength. So let's drag the group input down here. And I want to take this first bump strength and let's put that into the extra socket. And then the second bump strength, we will put that into the extra socket. So the first bump strength is just controlling the metal. So I'm just going to call this metal bump strength. So a metal bump strength. And then the second one here, this is controlling the rust. So I'm going to rename this one to rust bump strength. All right, so I'll drag the group input back here. I'll press the N key to close the side panel and I'll hit tab to go out of the node group. So we have the overall scale of the material and then we also have the different metal colors. So metal colors one and two. Then we have the noise scale and then we also have the noise detail and the noise roughness. Then we also have this rust color here, so you can change the color of the rust. We also have the amount of rust, so you can have there be lots of rust or very little rust, and the rust brightness if you want to see it better. And then we have the rust scale. Also we have the rust detail, so you can have big chunks of rust if you want to. And also the rust roughness, so this is pretty cool if you turn this down it looks like there's big chunks of rust. And then the rust distortion. And then finally we have the roughness of the material, so you can make it more shiny if you want to. And then we have the metal bump strength and the rust bump strength. So that is going to be it for this tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel to help me keep on creating these Blender tutorials, a great way to do that is to purchase the finished material on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. I'll have the links in the description. And if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials, then definitely check out my ultimate Blender procedural material pack.
And you can also check out my procedural material packs to purchase packs of 10 materials. And you can also purchase all of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. All the links are in the description. And some great ways to support me here on YouTube are by checking out the YouTube memberships by clicking down there on that join button next to the subscribe button. And also if you'd like to send me a little tip, then you can use the super thanks feature here on YouTube underneath this video. And I do appreciate all of your support. So that's going to be it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching.